Can you talk about some of the changes that you have seen over the years of your work? Well, a lot of it was equipment. Uh, they updated this, uh, like the air mass and one thing or another, they changed that type of thing, with, and the bunker gear, and uh, the trucks, of course. You know, right. They upgraded. Like when I started, you know, we had a 1951 Chevy uh, one-ton pump truck, mm -hmm. and we had a 56 bumper truck, and we had a 1939 Pierce Arrow aerial truck. Oh. And uh, yeah, it's it's really changed. <laughs> that was pretty old equipment. <laughs> it, yeah, it's really changed. Yeah. And uh, and I started there. We had the uh, well, quite a new telesquirt. Yes. And we still had the old 59 pump. And that was a monster to drive. It'd go like a son of a gun, but you couldn't stop it. Yeah. <laughs> I remember the first time, that was the first truck I drove on a call. And uh, two guys with me, that's the first truck. I was going and heading down Dundas Street, and getting up to Wellington, and there's a police officer directing traffic. He was right in my way. <laughs> and I, there's no way I could have stopped that thing. No. And it turned out, fortunately, to be not too much of a fire, so. But that was my first experience driving the thing, is manual steering. Oh. And I rode on the tailgate of that thing. When you hit a bump, you come flying right off the thing. You left right, <laughs> kind of flip. Uh, yeah. That was fun. <laughs> we don't see men riding on the back of the truck no, anymore. No, learn to hang on real good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sometimes, I remember one time we were uh, having a dinner, and we got a call. I mean, I rode the tailgate then. I wasn't going to leave my pork shop behind, so I took that with me. <laughs> I'm riding on the back of the truck eating the pork shop, so. <laughs> um, in the department, of course, you saw a lot of changes through the years. Is there something that you say, oh, that was the biggest change that happened when, when this or that came in? Was there, I mean, uh, yeah. <clears throat> well, I think, <clears throat> I think one of the things, biggest changes and more welcome changes with the, the turnout gear that we had. <clears throat> um, when I first started, we had, uh, very poor turnout gear. We used to have uh, uh, plastic helmets that were not very thick. Mm. And I've seen, uh, coming back from a major fire, and I've seen helmets that were starting to melt. Oh, boy. Uh, because uh, they were just not very good. And uh, they were on your head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty hot. Yeah. But they could improve that, and they turned the, the turnout gear is so much better now. Even from the time I left, that was 28 years ago, to now, what they have now is the best there is. So, yeah. he, but before it was, you know, just hip <laughs> hip boots and, uh, and a long the, coat. The long coat. And yeah. A long coat. They were so. I oh, they were cumbersome. I don't know. Even imagine the ladder with, with those. Did you get your training? It was all in-house training. Uh, in fact, I was the very first one that um, it was when we went to a fire. A lot of the guys went into fires and never wore breathing apparatus. Yes. And uh, uh, Chuck Young was a uh, training officer at the time, and I was the very first firefighter that they said, when you're on scene, you are in breathing apparatus, period. Now it's a, a, gif, a given, you have to. So uh, I know like, I was in a couple of fires with, in fact, I was in the fire one time with a, my, one of my captains, and, and uh, I had breathing apparatus on, and we were pulling a hose in, and it was quite a bit of fire. We went in and, and uh, the hose got snagged. So I went back, I said, I was quite a bit younger than he was. I said, I'll go get the hose. So I unsnagged it and got back and he was on the floor. Oh. And uh, I pulled him out, he had no breathing apparatus on. And it's smoky, overcome by a little bit of smoke and he went down. Yeah. And uh, I pulled him out and you know, I thought after that, it could have been both of us in there. Exactly. You know, and he was fine came across something called a fog nozzle that had a different idea than yeah. smother, uh, yeah. Can you talk about yeah, the difference? Yeah, um, if, if the temperature's right, um, you use the mist uh, so that you turn the nozzle down so it's not a straight stream. It comes out as a, as a almost like a shower, even lighter mm -hmm. than that. And if the temperature's right, that, that mist will turn to steam. And steam will convert into, and I, forget my numbers, it's like 1,700 times more than a gallon of water and a gallon of mist steam would be 1,700 times bigger. 
So what it does is it knocks the fire down. So you got all this steam and it comes down that covers the fire, it's like knocks, it, yeah. knocks it down. And then once it goes down, then you open back up. Like you, you stick the nozzle into a door, wheel it around and then shut it and let the steam do its work. And then open it back up and you can go in and hit the hot, hot spots. Yeah. So, and I've seen fires, uh, um, the, the, the fire that was downstairs and after we knocked it down, went upstairs and there was actually a fire upstairs. We never put any water on it upstairs at all. The hmm. steam actually knocked it down. We didn't know That's what it. was burning up there at the time. Yeah.